ask you what are your major results? So there were many results and many presentations and many posters. The field of immunotherapy has seen the development of several drugs by several companies, making the, I would say, the number of reports very high. But I would say uh, some, some companies are more advanced, and some compounds are more advanced in terms of clinical development. And potentially today we will focus on the one which have reached a high level of evidence, so clinical trials which are beyond the phase one. But take a minute to go to see all the phase one which have been presented to because there are lots of early developments in combination in the field of immunotherapy which are of interest. But if we focus on the ones which might change the way we perceive the disease strategy, there are, to me, three very, three very important trials. Two of them are of striking importance because they are phase three randomized trial, uh, conducted in a very proper manner, very well conducted, meaning that they just uh, settled down a new uh, evidence 1A, like we say, a new strong evidence for clinical strategy, clinical treatment. These two trials, phase three randomized trial, we're looking at the second line treatment of non-small cell lung cancer, which usually is treated by docetaxel. Some people use erlotinib, but mainly docetaxel, which looks a bit better. And this docetaxel was challenged by nivolumab, a product from BMS. At the time the trials were developed, we didn't know if uh, squamous cell histology would do completely differently from non-squamous. So at that time, the company decided to make two completely separated trials, not to stratify, but really to completely separate the patient population to have a clean result. And that this is two trials looking at the same question, docetaxel versus nevolumab, have been presented here. So I think the first one, which is potentially even more important than the other one, is the one in squamous cell histology. If I, if I stress the squamous, it's because it's potentially a decade that we make some advances in, in non-squamous with permetrexed, with anti-orgeogenic drugs, with uh, the molecular definition of subtypes, but it's also a decade we haven't done anything for squamous cell histology. So the first one is it's confined to squamous histology and was showing as a primary endpoint uh, a very significant benefit in overall survival. Squamous cell histology uh, do not do very well on docetaxel. The median overall survival was six months. It was, it's quite low, but when you historically look at how squamous cell do on docetaxel, it's more or less what you will find. But we did not focus on, on squamous before. Mm -hmm. And the nivolumab, on the contrary, or on the benefit, makes 9.2 months. So it's more than three months benefit of overall survival, which is also more that the benefit we had, which has settled down docetaxel versus placebo um, 12 years ago or 15 years ago. So it's really a striking difference. But more than that, docetaxel remains a very toxic drug, very difficult to administer to patients. And on that regard, uh, nivolumab is extremely well tolerated. The quality of life is preserved. Patients remain uh, with a good PS. So it's really also a strategy which is protecting the quality of life. Last but not least, with immunotherapy, you have for the first time in, in the history of, of treatment of advanced disease, the feeling that there are some uh, long-term responders, so long-term good outcomes, and, uh, and, uh, and potentially it might completely change the perception we have and the way we talk to our patients, because there is potentially 20 or bit more of patients which might benefit for a long term of these drugs, mm. which is very important for us as doctors too, because it really gives a new, a new way of just imagining the future of treating cancer. Mm. Yeah, this is very important. And there are some more, uh, some, um, more uh, studies important in small cell lung cancer? Yes, um, I think I would like to extend what uh, Professor Peters just uh, explained to you concerning non-small cell lung cancer to the field of small cell lung cancer because this again is a field where, where we haven't made any progress during the last years. So, of course, uh, in small cell lung cancer, the clinical development of these checkpoint inhibitory antibodies is in a very early stage, but nevertheless, we have seen at least two presentations at this meeting uh, showing very interesting and, from my point of view, promising results. So the first one, was a trial with the anti-PD-1 antibody pembrolizumab. Um, this trial included patients, pre-treated patients with extensive disease, small cell lung cancer. All of these patients had pre-treatment with a platinum doublet. 
And it's important to mention that uh, these patients were pre-selected based on uh, PDL1 immunohistochemistry. So this was done with the aim to enrich the population with patients probably responding uh, to an anti-PD1 antibody. So still a very small trial, 20 patients were reported, but nevertheless resulted uh, in a response rate of about 32%, 35% which is uh, promising, promising. As you mentioned before, these uh, responses also were very durable and the t toxicity profile of pembrolizumab was, was very good in this trial too, so something which we already know from the other trials. So the second trial uh, in extensive disease, small cell lung cancer, was a trial in patients again, uh, pre-treated with platinum doublet, many of them had also different other lines of therapy and a considerable percentage of these patients was even considered to be platinum refractory, a cohort which is usually uh, associated with a very poor uh, prognosis. So in this trial, it was a randomized phase two trial. There was a randomization between nivolumab monotherapy and combination therapies, combining anti-PD-1 antibody nivolumab with the anti-CTLA-4 antibody ipilimumab with different doses. And in this trial, we saw a response rate of 19% for the patients with the monotherapy and of 35%, 32% for the patients in the combination therapy. This also translated into an overall survival difference, so we had a 4.4 month overall survival for the nivolumab monotherapy and an 8.2 month overall survival for the combination therapy, although the combination therapy had some more toxicity, especially GI toxicity and skin toxicity. There were responses in the pdl one positive and the pdl one negative cohorts, again stressing the problem of this biomarker, which is not very reliable, which is difficult to assess. And there were responses in patients being platinum sensitive, but also responses, uh, responses in the patients being platinum refractory. So from my point of view, um, very interesting and promising data. And uh, as we all know, there will, are more studies to come. They are already, have already been launched uh, on a phase two and also on a phase three level. We could start to discuss a bit the biomarker with the second trial I'd like to, to present. Is um, when I spoke about the squamous cell histology, in this trial, the biomarkers of PDL1 look like be not being predictive of a major benefit or, or bet uh, most, more important benefit as compared to docetaxel in this histology. On the other trial, the non squamous, where the prognosis, well, the outcome is better by definition, so the improvement was also three months, but from 9 to 12. So also a strong benefit in survival. In this trial, uh, it looked like nivolumab benefit was more correlated to enrich, I would say, to the, in the population of high expressor of PDL1, showing that potentially both compounds are equal if you don't have any expression of PDL1 on the cell surface. But nivolumab becomes more and more, uh, I would say, an advantage as compared to docetaxel if you have a higher expression of PDL1. So it, it makes the biomarker at the time being not reliable to uh, rule out, to, to select negatively patients uh, for nivolumab or to exclude patients from receiving nivolumab. But it's an interesting scientific question to wonder why do these two trials show so discrepant results. Do you have any idea? So what comes to my mind when I think about this problem is uh, the different percentage of patients with smoking or non-smoking history within these trials. So in the squamous trial, uh, almost all the patients had a, a smoking history, about, I think, 35%, uh, 95%. Uh, in the non-squamous trial, there was a considerable percentage of about 20% of the patients that were non-smokers. And there were about 17% of the patients either having an activating EGFR mutation or an ALK rearrangement. So from my point of view, it seems that the adenocarcinoma cohort is more heterogeneous, at least as far as immunotherapies are concerned, mm -hmm. than the squamous cohort, which mm -hmm. is more homogeneous. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason for this difference. I think we all, as we know now, probably the, the, the mutational load will be an important uh, 
question uh, whether immune checkpoint inhibitor antibodies can uh, lead to response or not. And mm -hmm. with this regard, I think smoking history is very important. Mm. This development, the development of this biomarker is really a, a kind of, of a challenge. We had as a third trial this phase two produced by, uh, presented by Genentech, who was looking also at docetaxel but versus their own compound. It's a phase two, so of course it's more hypothesis generating, but was also showing in, it was all non-small cell lung cancer, all mixed, mm -hmm. also showing that at least this biomarker looks like being a, a flexible way to enrich in responders. But again, probably not a way to, to exclude nivolumab uh, for certain categories of patients. But it's, it's really a way we are moving and with potentially the, implica the society implication of having to pay for this drug, the question at the end of this meeting is, are we ready to use this biomarker? Are we ready to accept that maybe an authority in our country would say we only want this drug for the positives? Uh, will we accept this? Or are we going to defend at the time being the fact that, uh, uh, like the trials have shown, nivolumab should be prescribed in all commerce, not small cell lung cancer? What will you do in your country? Well, I think at the moment uh, I would argue against the use of the biomarker, uh, the, the PDL1 uh, biomarker. I don't think the data is there to do so. I think, uh, as you mentioned already before, we have uh, the problem that every company has got its own test, so we can't even compare. Uh, the trial results one to each other. So th at the moment, I would strictly argue against the use of the biomarker. Mm. I was quite surprised in the small cell trial to see that the expression of PDL1 on small cell, which is quite homogeneous, also smokers, we know more or less uh, very, quite well the biology of small cell. The expression of PDL1 in small cell in the pembrolizumab data looks extremely low. Uh, 30, 30 plus percent, yes. I remember. It's really something we still have to explore some more because it's very interesting how variable it is. What do you think about it? Definitely. Yeah, just, uh, just a little yeah. a small answer. We have yeah. not yeah. enough yeah. time. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're absolutely Two right. Uh, during the screening phase, it showed up that uh, only 30% of the patients were deemed to be PDL1 positive. So mm. uh, that is something we have to learn about. Um, I think um, future trials uh, will show if with a different methodology, maybe mm -hmm. the result is different. So that's again the problem of the, the different tests that are around mm -hmm. and we can't compare them right mm -hmm. now. Okay, thanks. Um, just uh, one uh, sentence for, for taking home. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's very easy for me. I am responsible of the ESMO guidelines for the thoracic malignancies okay. and uh, as uh, soon as this result have been um, published, well, the, you know the first, the squamous has been published during the presentation in the New England Journal of Medicine. We are waiting for the second one and as soon as the two will be published, I will have to revise my guidelines to insert immunotherapy as second oh. standard of oh. care. Mm -hmm very important. So from my point of view, um, this ESCO meeting I think was a very important step. Um, I think now finally these agents have arrived in daily practice, but um, there are many data still to come and we still have a lot to learn. I just want to mention the, the, the concept of combination therapies. Mm -hmm. So a wide field has opened and now we have uh, to go in and, and take advantage of these new therapeutic options. Okay, thank you so much for your statement. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay.